learn about marketing in B120. You will learn about HR in B120. You will learn uh, about accounting and finance in B120 and so on. Do you know what we mean by a metaphor? This will lead us to a healthier economy. How to be static in a dynamic environment. Any more questions? Hello, I'm Amal Abdul Razak, the Business Studies Program Coordinator in Arab Open University, Egypt branch. I'm here to get the B120 course materials as a part of preparing my students and myself for a trip. Which trip? It's a trip to cross the bridge to success. Before talking about B120 in particular, I'd like to ask you a question. Why do you study business? Think about it. I can hear some of you saying that they study business because they dream of being managers. Some others dream of being bankers and entrepreneurs and so on. All your answers are great and all your answers lead us to one conclusion. You all have wonderful dreams and AOU takes the responsibility of helping you to achieve your dreams. And when we talk about dreams, we need to talk about success. At this point, I'd like you to keep in your mind one fact. Success is a choice. It never comes by luck. In order to succeed, you need to exert efforts, devote time, and plan for your studies. Back to our B120 course, an introduction to business studies course. This is the first business course in the business studies program in AOU. This course will enable you to gain the basic business knowledge and the skills that will facilitate your study of the more advanced courses. For this reason, B120 is considered to be a bottleneck. In other words, if you study B120 well and pass the B120 course successfully, you will find the more advanced courses easier. On the other hand, if you do not study B120 well, if you do not devote sufficient time and efforts for the course, you will encounter some difficulties in the more advanced courses. Therefore, I call B120 the bridge to success. And every semester, I prepare my students and myself for a trip. A trip? to cross the bridge to success. And now, all of you can join us in this trip. Are you interested? If you are interested, write after me the things that you need throughout the trip. Firstly, you need to bring your dreams and objectives with you. Secondly, you need your perseverance Thirdly, you need to exert efforts and devote time. Fourthly, you need to use the course materials, to use the e-library and the learning management system, LMS. And finally, you need to keep a very good sense of humor because I'm sure that you will need it throughout the trip. And now, we have no time to waste. Go quickly and prepare yourself for our trip, the trip of crossing the bridge to success. Let's go. What are you doing? 
Welcome to B120 course. So uh, this is your first business course, right? Okay. So B120 is an introduction to business studies, right? Okay. Why do you study business? You would like to be an entrepreneur and a businessman. Very good. Excellent. Huh? Who else would like to participate? Huh? Why do you study business? It helped me. It helped me in, in my job. In it, my help, it helps you in your job? Yeah. Okay. How? How? By improving business skills and managing your skills, marketing skills. Marketing skills? Business skills? Managerial skills? Huh? What else? Useful for manager the work would I do. Useful for managers because they need to make decisions, right? Mm -hmm. And they need to have business backgrounds. Yes. Excellent. Huh? What else? Who else? <laughs> Why did you join our business studies program? Why do you study business? To know more about the business in the work field. To know to know more about the business in the work field. Excellent. Okay. All right. And do you think that the first business course will enable you to do that? No. 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 <laughs> okay. Just but do you think, huh, just what? Just a start. Just a start. It's a first step. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. So it's a first step. For this reason, for this reason, I call B120 the bridge to success. The bridge to success. Why? Because the B120 course will enable you to gain the basic business knowledge and the skills that you need to complete your studies in AOU. You know, this is the first business course in, your business, in the business studies program in AOU. You know that. And you know that, inshallah, after finishing this course, you will start studying some other more advanced courses, right? Yeah. Okay. This means that the B120 will give you the basic knowledge that will enable you to go forward to other and to go smoothly through the other A advanced courses. Which means that it seems to be a very important course, is it? Yes. Okay, which means that you need to study well. Do you? Yes. <laughs> Just one yes <laughs> and nobody answers. <laughs> nobody answered this question except for Mustafa. <laughs> So, um, okay. All right, thank you very much. So, here, this is a bridge. This is our metaphor for the course. It's a bridge. <coughs> and actually, we are here now. All of us. And we'll start our trip today, inshallah, huh, to cross this bridge. At the end of the semester, all of us hopefully will be together on the other side, on the other side of the bridge. So you need to study well to join me, okay? I don't want to lose any of you at the end of the trip, all right? <laughs> okay, very good. Today is an introduction. According to your course calendar, today is an introduction. Uh, in the introduction, of course, I will give you a background about the course, about the different books you have, about the, um, uh, uh, the course outline, the assessment criteria, and all these things. Uh, for, uh, today, our class will be mainly about that. Next class, inshallah, we will start uh, uh, our first session and our first session from book one. So uh, let's start by uh, an introduction about this course. All right. An introduction to business studies. An introduction to business studies. A very important module that I believe you will enjoy very much if you work uh, properly and work hard on the course during the semester. Okay. Uh, the course have the course has aims, different aims. After studying this course, you should be able to do a number of things. You should be attain some objectives. You should be, at, be able to attain some objectives. Let's take an idea. First of all, you should be able to describe the key characteristics 
and roles of a business and explain some theories about how businesses operate. What does this mean? Management. Management. Huh. Theories. Theories. Concepts. Right? Ethics. 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 Okay, this is part of the one of the topics that you will study, yani, inshallah, in B120. So, different, different topics, different concepts, different theories. Okay, we, you might know many people who work after the high school, right? Directly after the high school, all right? And they work in different businesses, right? But when you and they are okay, yani, they are okay, they, they are they are successful in everything. But when you start to discuss with them about any of the concepts or or theories, huh? you will discover that they don't know nothing. They, do, they know nothing about these theories. They know nothing about concepts. Okay. Which means that we try to enrich, enrich your practical experience by these theories and concepts. Why? Because in AOU, most of the business courses enables you to bridge the gap between theory and the practice. And you will see now how, how we do that. How we bridge the gap between theory and the practice. You, can, you can't be very successful hmm, without having some idea about the concepts, theories, and, and, so on, and so on. And at the same time, concept theories without application hmm, means, means that you like the experience. So we try here to bridge the gap. So this is the first uh, uh, aim of the course. Uh, uh, secondly, you should be able to discuss some important issues concerning the interactions between a business and the social, economic, political, and technological context within which the business operates. Mm. Oh, what does this mean? What do you think? The steep analysis. The steep analysis. The steep analysis. Oh, we have somebody here who knows about business. Okay. <laughs> Are you done with your LB160 course? Yeah, I'm done. Ah, okay. This yeah. <laughs> is the reason. <laughs> All right. So. Um, how do you feel about that? Interactions between business and the external environment, right? Yes. The business, any business, any organization exists in, an, in a community, in an economy, right? Okay, so do you think that the business, any business will be affected by the external forces? Yes, of course. Uh, which forces? It is uh, inside forces like psychological and uh, Psychological? You, you, you talk about the personal level here, right? Okay, psychological. We can talk about the psychological uh, aspects if we are talking about our consumers, yes. right? About our employees and so on. But here we are talking about the macro, the macro level. Okay. So when we talk about the macro level, hmm, we can talk about economic forces, social forces, which of course. Uh, it depends heavily on the psychological aspects of people and some other uh, factors and so on. Okay, political forces, for example, Egypt after the uprising. What do you think about Egypt? How did businesses, uh, how were businesses affected by the uprising, the revolution? Yeah. Huh? Actually, the, the economics in Egypt is a um, little bit low. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes, so we had we had political we had for two years political instability, right? And accordingly economic instability, yes. right? Okay. So the, 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 the business come down slowly. There is no uh, um, organization or business work. Uh, yes, you are right. And you start to downsize the activities and to fire some people. What? Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. So you, you, now you are convinced that businesses are affected by the external forces, right? Political, social, economic, whatever. And B120 will enable you to uh, understand this relationship, understand how different forces affect businesses, and so on. All right. You should be able to outline the key course topics and explain why they are important in understanding a business. Here, what we mean by bridging the gap between theory and the practice, when you understand and when you study our uh, uh, five books of the B120, you will be able to understand how important these topics are in, e in analyzing the uh, real life world situation in different businesses and organizations. Okay? 
be able to explain how the different components of this course are related to each other. Now we will study five books, as you will see. You will study five books. Um, if this course is not designed well, hmm, you will feel fragmented. You will not be able to highlight the relationship between different topics. And do you think that do you think that you will benefit out of the course then? Of course not. So what we need to do, and because B120 is a very well-designed course, you will feel the relationship between, between different topics. You will be able to highlight this relationship. You will be able to benefit out of this relationship. Okay? So when you study, for example, human resources, huh? You will be able to link human resources to marketing, to accounting and finance, and to, to see at the end the, uh, uh, the structure of the business and the general vision of the business and so on. And how the business operates in general, right? Okay. Uh, you will be able to plan how to organize your studies. Mm, this is uh, something personal you'll be able to do. How to organize your studies, including gaining access to computer-based services. So computer-based services will be top in, will be used highly in this course, and you will be able to org to organize your studies. This means that you will have you will gain a skill, a skill of understanding different topics, how to organize the way you study, which with which topic you should you should start in studying. Hmm? I should start by this first, and then the other topic second, and and so on. So, okay. You will become aware of the ways you learn and how you use different elements of the course in this learning. Now, you have a new topic. After studying the new topic, after explanation of the topic, hmm, uh, you will start studying this and you will ask yourself, did I learn what I should have learned from the course? Or from the topic? Do I understand it well? You will ask yourself this question. Okay? And first of all, after the first time reading of the topic, you might feel that, but I missed some points. Then you will start reading the topic again. You will start visiting the LMS, the Learning Management System, slides uploaded. You will start using the e-library, the electronic library you have to search some topics related to the topic that you study, and so on. Okay? After doing all these things, you will feel that you got a better understanding of the topic, right? And this way you will be able to know which elements enabled you to understand, to understand the topic well. Okay? Very good. All right. So now you know the aims of the module, right? You know the aims of the module. You know uh, after B120 you should be able to, go to do all these things. You know that. All right, so you think that this is an important course, yes. an important module yes. that needs focus, needs concentration. Uh, uh, you should devote time and efforts to this course, right? Okay. All right. I just, um, I just would like you to understand a very important issue. Before doing anything in your life, you should identify your objectives. You should identify your objectives. <coughs> Don't take any step without knowing the aim of the step. All right? When I, when I come to, to, to come to AOU in the morning, I know that I'm coming to my work. I, don't, I know why I do this work. Okay? I know my aims. I know my objectives, and so on. So at the end, I'm not lost. I know what I'm doing, and I know uh, if I attain my objectives or not. Similarly, for studying, when you start doing anything in your life, you should identify objectives. Similarly, for studying, when you start studying any of the courses, hmm, you need to know about the aims and the objectives of this course. Why? To, uh, to, to make sure that you are on the right track. You focus on the main ideas, on the main concepts. You learn it from the topic, right? Otherwise, you will be lost. You might focus on some details that are not that important, leaving the core issues, right? 
And at the end, you will not learn anything from the course, right? Yes. Okay, so for this reason, I started by explaining the aims of the module. This is the reason. And at the beginning of each topic in B120, you will find a list of learning outcomes and objectives. So by, before starting to study the topic and reading the topic, you need to understand each of these objectives. Okay? And after studying the topic, hmm, check, use this list of objectives as a checklist. Did I achieve this objective or not? Ask yourself. If you achieve the objective, great. Now you learned what you, we would like you to learn. Okay? Otherwise, you need to reread the course, to ask me, to communicate with your colleagues, discuss about the topic, visit e-library and so on. All right? Okay. Key topics in the course. SWAT. <laughs> SWAT. <laughs> okay. B120, with B120, will, uh, uh, includes uh, uh, a number of topics, including what? Small businesses. Have you ever heard about small businesses? Yes, I have one. You have one! Excellent! Uh, tell us about your small business then. It's a, a small business uh, called The Waste Company. It's good. Um, and I'm like a consulting, a managerial consulting, a, a entrepreneur. Okay. With, with, with a small business, with a number of organizations. So it's a consultancy? Yes. Okay, very good, very good. But you, you work, it's, it's yours? Yes, fine. Okay, this is an entrepreneur. <laughs> hey guys, you have, we have here an entrepreneur. Okay, you should give us a presentation, inshallah, in the future about your business. Uh, we have a session here in book one about small uh, businesses, so we can use your experience in this and you can, t you can tell us about your experience, your, uh, your company, how you manage the company, how do you prepare, uh, uh, how you select the team and about your customer base and all these things. Okay? Very good. Okay, this will enrich our class very much. Okay. So, SWOT and STEEP analysis. SWOT and STEEP. These are two types of analysis that enable the, co enable the company to uh, analyze the environment. SWOT, SWOT enables the company to analyze its internal and external environment. Both. STEEP, only the external environment. And we'll go through these as a yani, topics in detail in book one. Okay? You will learn about business ethics. What we mean by business ethics? Do you know that businesses should have ethics? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. Of course. <laughs> and do you think that businesses ha have ethics? <laughs> it depends. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Yes, you are right. Sometimes some businesses have ethics. Okay, and they follow. They have uh, ethical codes, and some others do not. Right? And for this for this reason, they pollute our environment. Right? They produce unhealthy products to our children, and so on. And we, you will know about all these things. How how uh, uh, can a business prepare its uh, ethical code and? Um, how the business should follow the code of ethics. All right, business structure, hmm? how we structure a business, business culture, culture? Yeah. Ah, do you think that businesses should have cultures? Yes, sure. Okay, have you ever read about that? Yes. Okay, tell me. It's uh, dealing with uh, the country, who, uh, which is uh, dealing with my work uh, with this in my country. Would I make the bit small business in it? Okay. Culture. So no. I cannot um, <coughs> jump on this culture to do my business. This okay. Is dealing with the, 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 the people. All right. This is a very important point and aspect. Okay. However, it's not yeah, actually what we mean by the business culture. The culture in the, in the company. What, what, what's your name? Asma. Asma. Asma, Asma explains a very uh, important point. She, she, she talks about the multinational companies, yeah. right? And when you start a business in another country, for example, you have a, a, a company or a business in Egypt, and you would like to, to have a branch or a subsidiary in France, okay? So you need to analyze the cultural aspects there to respect, hmm? to, res to respect, to understand and respect. And accordingly, you will behave and you will conduct your business within the cultural context there, right? This is what she, she, she means. Uh, however,
bigger. When we talk about business culture, we mean something else. The formal, the formal culture and the, the, the culture came from the values. The values, excellent. Mm. Okay, all right, so, uh, all right. Part of our, I'll give you an example. Part of our business culture, we have two companies, company A and company B. Company A has a culture of satisfying customers. Okay, so from the very beginning, when you go and enter the company or the store, hmm, everybody will try to satisfy you. They welcome you, they give you uh, uh, all the offers, discuss all the offers they have, okay, recommend some offers to you when they know about the way you, that you will use uh, 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 the product, okay? They can customize your product. Yes, customize sometimes if they can and so on. And after selling the product to you, huh, they follow up asking you, do you have any problems with the product? Is everything okay? And if you have a complaint, then they handle your complaint and they allow you to return the product back if you don't like it, yes. right? And so on. All right, this is part of the business, this is the values, business culture. So when a newcomer comes and join the company, we'll see everybody exerting efforts to what? To satisfy customers. So everybody will build this type of value. Yes. Okay, and accordingly, they will start behaving similarly, right? which means that the company affected, affected its employees' huh? values, values as if it is a country, right? Right or wrong? Okay. Uh, I just need to ask you, Doctor, uh, does the culture depend on the business structure itself or the country that the business will open? Both. Both of, them. Both of them. Actually, we have business culture. The business culture is affected by the national culture is affected by the national culture. And you will know about this, you will, uh, we will study business ethics in book one, we will study half a step five dimensions. In half a step five dimension, you will understand how the national culture affects the business culture. Okay? Back to our example, company B, they do not believe in customer satisfaction or anything. They would like to make sales and that's it, okay? So once, <laughs> laughing, <laughs> so once they sell the product, once they sell the product, even if the product is defective, even if it's not working or anything, you come back with the product. I have a problem with this product. They will raise the sign, products sold can't be returned, <laughs> right, or replaced. They will never allow you to, to what? To replace or return the product that you got. This is another part of, uh, this is a very negative culture that we have in some businesses, right? All right. So. We will know what we mean by business culture in B120, uh, external environment, as I told you. You will, st will study external environment, different forces in the external environment and so on. Uh, you will uh, know about motivation, recruitment, human resources development, human resources, HR. HR. Have you ever heard about HR? Yes. Uh, what do you mean by HR then? Human resources. Go ahead. Hmm. Yes, it's helping the, 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 the way you can help them be and the, the employer to devote himself to the skills the company will need in the future, for example. And, and Excellent. Excellent. And so human resources are employees. Yes. yes. Human resources are managers. Mm -hmm. Human resources are people working in an organization, right? Yes, yes. These are human resources. Do you think that people are important for any organization? Yes, yes. Of important? Of course. of course. Why? 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 Success or failure? Success or, fa or failure? Through what? Through their learning skills, through their attitudes, through their service that they give to their customers. I, excellent! Because they deal with customers, they uh, plan set and set objectives for the company and so on, right? So they do everything. All right, so you will, you will learn about human resources in an organization. You will learn how to motivate human resources in an organization how to design a good job for them, okay? Uh, how to develop them through training, coaching, and other things, okay? All right. You will learn about accounting statements. Accounting. 
<laughs> accounting. <laughs> accounting. I know that all of you love, love accounting. <laughs> accounting. <laughs> accounting statements. Okay, what do you mean by accounts, accounting statements? Have you ever heard about the word accounting statements or financial statements? It's basic sort of Transactions? You have some transactions like sales, purchasing, and so on, huh? and then. You have some financial statements. Yeah, when you record, of course, these transactions, when you have a transaction, when you, when you as a company purchase raw materials from a supplier. Okay? This means that you should record this. Accounting people should record this, right? In a specific way. You will know about these things, of course, in, this, in B120. Uh, not, in, not in too much details of how to record these transactions. But you know, in general, about the financial statements. The, when we talk about the financial statements, we are the balance sheet, income statement, the statement of cash flow. Cash flow. Huh? What's wrong? No, no. Huh? You have any problems? No, no. You're okay? No. All right. I have a question. In accounting, huh? you will be able to do calculation? In accounting? Mm -hmm. Sorry? You will be? Able to do calculation or only just background? In, B1 in B120, it will be mainly a theoretical background. I, I, we will give you some examples of balance sheet, income statement, and statement of cash flows, of course. But you will not go in details uh, of recording the, the transaction, the double entry transaction, you know. But you, get, you will get the background about the different statements, okay, and about the accounting elements including, included in, in, in these statements, okay, and the role of each statement. All right? Okay. Sorry. All right. So, and you will uh, uh, learn about customer consumption uh, and satisfaction, marketing functions. This is in the marketing book. In the marketing book. Have you ever heard about marketing? Uh, go ahead. <laughs> we have an entrepreneur here. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Okay, so the, your target segment. Yes. Your target, so المستهدف, your target segment. Your target segment. Okay, so you will learn about this. Do you think that a business, any business, can satisfy the whole market? No. Of course not. So we segment the market, divide the market into similar groups, and then you target a specific segment and produce to, to uh, satisfy this segment's needs and wants. And so on. You will learn about this in B120. Uh, uh, what we mean by marketing? How to sell your product? Okay. How to select the uh, 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 the segment to which you to which you sell your product? Okay. How consumers behave? And so on. All right. And then you will learn about the business power. Business power in book five. Businesses have power, especially if they are giant, multinational. Okay, they have power. This power, this power, sometimes, sometimes, uh, yani are, um, is being used negatively towards the society, the environment, people, and so on. Okay, so you will learn about the business power, how to control the business power and the negative business power in book five. So this is, uh, these are the topics that, the main topics that are included in B120 course. What do you think about these topics? Do you think that these topics will enrich your knowledge in business? Of course. Yeah. Okay, so do you feel excited about studying B120? Yes. Yeah, sure. Not yet. I'm so excited. Okay, I have something more for you. <laughs> Skills. <laughs> right. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> all right. Why do you study? To learn, to gain knowledge. To succeed. To succeed, okay. To graduate. To graduate. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. And when you learn, when you learn, and when you gain knowledge, okay, you will be able to use such knowledge 
in your work in the future, right? Uh, do you think that knowledge will remain the same? No, no question. Every day we have something new, right? Yes, especially okay. in the business. So what should we do now? <laughs> you have to develop yourself and you have to update your knowledge, right? But some people say that why should I study everything in the practice, in practice and in the practice of a real life situation is different from what we have in, in books. Because the study building is the basics of... Uh, Excellent! It gives you the basic knowledge. And basic rarely change. Basics rarely change. This is the first thing. The second thing, it's about the skills that you gain from uh, studying. In, in AOU, especially in AOU, business courses are designed in a way that enables you to gain knowledge and to gain skills at the same time. Yeah. I think theoretical knowledge will, will, be, will enable me to gain practical success. You are right. And not only the theoretical knowledge, but also the skills that you will gain. For example, you will, you will uh, build a skill of case study analysis. You will build some analytical skills, some critical thinking skills, decision-making decision skills, communication skills, when you talk, when you present, when we discuss, when you prepare your assignments, Negotiating. negotiation and so on. All these skills, as long as you use in the future, you will never lose them. So you can use all the skills that you will gain from the course at work. Even if you, you gain all the basic business knowledge, and of course some extra knowledge will be there, of course, but even if you forgot some knowledge, you forgot some information that you got from courses, you will never lose the skills. Which skills, which skills you will gain uh, which skills will you gain from B120 course? The B120 will enable you to develop oral and written communication skills. Oral and written. So you'll be able to communicate with me. Face-to-face. Face-to-face. Yeah. Communicate with your colleagues. Okay? Communicate with, with anybody else. Hmm? Orally? And written. Uh, and written. Written through what? Through your teammates, your, through your assignments. You'll be able to write, you'll be able to write reports, write research, and so on. Papers, and so on. Okay. Uh, you'll be able to participate in group discussions. Usually we have some activities in class, in class activities that include uh, 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 group discussions. So you'll be participating in this, all right, with active listening and active discussions. What do we mean by active listening and active discussions? You learn how to listen to you, to each other. Okay, it's not a one-man show. You need to learn how to listen, right? And you need, you need to learn how to participate and give the other party some information. Right? Okay? So this is a very important thing. How to listen to others and how to help others to learn from you as well, right? You will learn about this through B120. Taking initiative in acquiring information. Now, you have a question. Some of the topics that are not clear for you, okay? What should you do? Should you wait to ask me every time? Take the initiative. You will learn how to take the initiative and visit your e-library, hmm? visit the LMS, discuss with your colleagues in circles, start discussing and so on. So you need to know, you need to learn how to depend on yourself. This is a very important thing. How to gain the, the knowledge on your own. I'm here for helping you, of course. But however, yes, you need to know how to build your own knowledge base. This is a very important thing. Okay? B120 will enable you to do that. Using IT skills such as PowerPoint, Word, and Internet. Of course, this is the, the office, Yani. So you will learn how to use all these things. Uh, gaining experience in researching different sources. Research. I'm doing my team A. I need some information. <laughs> some references and so on, so you will know how, you will learn how to research different uh, sources, learning how to use Harvard style referencing and in-text referencing, referencing, <laughs> the referencing, usually you have, usually, usually, uh, uh, a referencing is uh, a matter that we focus on in B120. Um, you need to learn how to be more honest in transferring others' ideas when you prepare your assignment or any other paper, okay, 
and you got or you 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 got some knowledge or some some information from different books or different references, you should refer to the person, the person who prepared such information, right? So, referencing is very important because. You, this way, you will be more honest in presenting the ideas and in presenting your papers and assignments. Uh, we have, to, of course, before the Team A class and throughout the semester, we have, uh, we discuss Harvard-style referencing and we upload from the, the first class, you will find a Harvard-style uh, uh, referencing guide uploaded on the LMS. Go through it and we will discuss this uh, 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 part of it every class so that you are experienced with Harvard style uh, before submitting your team A, inshallah. Okay, learning to respect deadlines and cut off dates. Respect deadlines. Deadlines. <laughs> <laughs> cut off dates. We have a cut off date for the team A. <laughs> and you should submit your team A, you respect the deadline and submit it to the team A on time. Will you submit your team A on time? Yes. Of course, <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Without delay, B120 will enable you to, to respect deadlines and cut off dates. Improving analytical and critical, and critical thinking skills. <laughs> analytical and critical thinking. Well, it's not about memorizing. It's not about memorizing. It's something deeper. It's about understanding. It's about analyzing. It's about learning and helping others to learn from you. You got that? So when you take any course, it's not about just memorizing what you take. No, it's not like that. It doesn't work. How to learn, how to analyze, how to criticize. If you don't like one of the concepts, say that. I don't like this concept. I feel that I'm not convinced. OK? Uh, what are the pros and cons of each concept or theory you study, okay? How to improve this? Do you have any recommendations and so on? So it's not about memorizing. You need to understand. And when you understand, without understanding, you will never, you will never learn, okay? All right. Developing case study anal uh, analysis skills, the case study, uh, every time, inshallah, we'll try, perhaps not every time, but after some topics, we'll try to have uh, a case study, and we'll discuss, the, read it together, discuss it together in groups, okay? So that we can bridge the gap between the theory that you study or you take in class and what we have in the real world or in the real uh, world businesses. So we might have uh, a business ethics case study, business culture case study, SWOT analysis and steep analysis case study, and so on. Okay? So, and this actually will be a very yani, interesting activity. You will like it very much. All right. So these are the skills that B120 will enable you to gain. What do you think about these skills? Interesting. Interesting. Okay. What else? Useful. Useful. <laughs> what else? Important for introduction business. Excellent. Very important. Very important. Huh? So you think, again, you think that B120 is an important course? Yes. Uh -huh. An important course needs a lot of studying. Again. Okay. <laughs> Never forget this. All right. The contents. All right. B120 uh, has five books. These are the five books. Can you see them? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's take one by one. This is the first book. The first book that we will start with, inshallah, next class is What is a Business? This book will enable you to understand what we mean by a business. What we mean by a business. What we mean by business ethics, business structure, business culture, small and medium-sized businesses, and so on. This is the first book. Okay? All right. The second book. The second book is an introduction 
to human resource management. And we said that human resources are human resources are people, right, in an organization. So how to select them and recruit them? How to hire them? How to motivate them? How to design a good job for them? How okay? To how to? Maintain, maintain them loyal, excellent. How to keep them loyal to our company. Okay, how to motivate them. All right, how to train them, and so on. This is in book two. Book three. Accounting. Accounting, <laughs> Accounting. your lovely book. <laughs> your favorite <laughs> specialization. <laughs> Accounting and finance. Actually, accounting is very interesting, but I know that some of you, not all of you, some of you do not feel very comfortable with numbers. But actually, uh, actually, when you start studying this, you will be familiar with the, with the, with these topics. You, f you will feel comfortable, inshallah. So do not rely on your back, any negative background or experiences, <laughs> because actually, accounting is a very interesting aspect. Yani. just let's try. Yani. All right. So in accounting, you will study, as I told you, about the different financial statements, uh, balance sheet, income statement, statement of cash flow. Um, you will know about different accounting elements, uh, uh, some, some other aspects and topics like the, the cash basis, the accrual basis, some technical topics in accounting. Now, of course, you might not be familiar with these topics that I'm talking about, the topics that I'm talking about currently, but you will know about them in detail, inshallah, when you start uh, uh, book three. Book four, Marketing. innovation, innovation. <laughs> creation, right? Marketing, marketing is the fourth book, okay? In marketing, as I told you, we learn uh, uh, about consumer behavior, about uh, uh, how to, to segment the market, how to target specific segment, uh, um, about the external marketing environment, and different types of uh, the, the marketing mix, or the four P's, as we call it, and sometimes we call it the, the seven P's, it depends on the sector we are talking about, and so on. This is about marketing. Those who, who are very creative, uh, they will like marketing. Because marketing needs a lot of creativity. Okay? So you would like to be a marketer? I hope so. Inshallah, you will be. <laughs> Inshallah. Okay. Book five. Uh, in book five, book five is about thinking of businesses critically, differently. In this book, you will study about globalization. Globalization, you know about globalization? Globalization, what do we mean by globalization? What, what, uh, what are the drivers of globalization? Huh? Um, how to control the business power or the negative business power and so on. All these things will be here in book five. So this is the general idea about each of the books. And here I included some details about each, uh, like in book one, session one will provide you with an introduction to what a business is. Session two describes the external environment. This is mainly from the calendar, like this is mainly from your calendar. When we talk about, like session, session one provides you with an introduction of what is a business. Session two describes the external environment, steep analysis, as we said. Session three addresses the structure of business. What we mean by business structure? Session four examines business culture. Okay? Session five focuses on business ethics and so on. And so on in each of the books. Okay? All right. Would you like to go through them now? Are you interested? Yes. Okay, interested? <laughs> All right. In book two, we have mainly four sessions. The fifth session is an optional reading. The fifth session is an optional reading. Okay. So in session one, session one describes the different aspects of HRM, human resources management. Huh. The different motivational schemes with regards to why people work. Why do you go to work? I will ask you this question. Why do you go to work? So, pe different people have different 
uh, aims and have different motivational schemes that lead them to go to work, right? Okay, in session two, session two looks at different methods and HRM policies used to structure work and increase job satisfaction. Do you think that job satisfaction is an important thing? Yes, yes. Of course, if you are not satisfied with your job, what, what will happen? You will leave. And we don't want you to leave. You know why? You know why? Because you as an employee, you as an employee, represent a part and a very important component in our knowledge base. Yes. You spend time with us in the organization. You know everything. Okay? And you are experienced with what experience with what we do, right? So we don't want to lose you. We trained you, we spent money further, we spent money in recruiting you, in selecting you, in training you. So in addition to the aspect of knowledge base, we don't want you to leave because we spent a lot of money in this and we, don't, we do not want to start the whole story from the very beginning again with, with some other people, right? Okay, session three outlines the methods used in, and the issues to consider in the entry stage of the human resource <coughs> management, okay? We mean here recruitment, how we do recruitment, how we select people, which methods uh, uh, should be used in selecting people, right? Interviews, like testing, and so on. Have you ever been a, in an interview? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So, what did they, did they do to you? <laughs> uh, all they did to me, they asked me simple, basic questions while I was interviewing, them, like introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. They just want to gain a knowledge <coughs> of the, the interview, which was me, mm -hmm. in order to accept me or reject me within the job. Mm -hmm. So they asked me interview. Introduce yourself, your education, your background, where do you see yourself in five years? They have their criteria based on the HR department, of course, in which they select and recommend this candidate will go for the job, this candidate will lose the job. Okay, very good. And uh, were you accepted? I was accepted. Uh, very, good. <laughs> very good, excellent. Okay, very good. So, uh, but it was only an interview? It was, uh, no, it was an interview, yeah, and then I went to the assessment center in order to. Yes. Yeah. Then the assessment center. This guy went through a whole, <laughs> a whole chain of procedures in being uh, selected and recruited. Uh, actually, in, in selecting people and in hiring people in an organization, we have different methods: testing, interviews, and the assessment center. The assessment center, which includes different different methods together. Okay, and we'll go through all these things in book two. So uh, this is about session three. Session four focuses on performance management, how to manage performance, how to manage performance, okay? The policies needed, the training and development, development needed for employees, mm -hmm. because of course we all know that we need to train our employees, right? Okay, otherwise they will not in, uh, update their information and knowledge, scouts. Okay, so this is about uh, uh, book two. Uh, 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 session five is an optional reading, like you can read it, but it will not be, uh, 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 it will not be in the exam, it will not be explained in details in, in, in classroom and so on. But of course, if you read it and you have some, you would like to discuss it, we are open for this. Book three uh, includes five sessions. Session one introduces the need for accounting in businesses. Why do we need accounting in businesses? Session two introduces the concept of financial stakeholders. What we mean by stakeholders and so on, you will know what we mean by financial stakeholders. Why uh, uh, financial st stakeholders are interested in our businesses. Which type of financial information stakeholders will uh, look for. Uh, session three focuses on accounting statements. As I told you, balance sheet, income statement, st statement of cash flow. Session four introduces the framework of accounting and the concept uh, of value with different accounting branches. Okay, yeah, for, for example, we, they mean here by accounting branches, we have different types of accounting, account, financial accounting, managerial accounting, and so on. Well, what's the difference between them? You will know about that in detail in book three, inshallah. Session five deals with the process of accounting that takes place within the business. It, it discusses budgets, what we mean by budgets, what we mean by budgetary control, and so on. <coughs> Do you have any questions? No. Okay. 
Book four, marketing. <laughs> uh, uh, session one uh, looks at the nature of marketing, including me, what we mean by marketing orientation, okay? Uh, market segmentation, all right? Uh, uh, the concept of relationship marketing, what we mean by relationship marketing, you will know about that in session one. In session, session two, examine the marketing environments, as I told you, in a, any business operates in an external environment that we need to understand, right? And session, session three, explores customer behavior, how consumers behave. What are the motives behind uh, their purchasing decisions, and so on. You need to understand that as a business person or as a businessman, different organizations need to understand this. Why? Because uh, the, the, uh, through, through understanding this, you, you will be able to attract and target different consumers, satisfy their needs, producing products that will uh, uh, satisfy customers' needs and wants, and so on. Session four introduces the four P's, the marketing mix. Yeah. Uh, might, might, might be, might be not the, 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 mark, the marketing mix is about what? Product, place, price, not the, the, not the forces. I'm talking about, yes. Okay, not the forces. <laughs> the, five, yeah, the five Ps, the, uh, sometimes, okay, it's, in your book, there are four Ps, okay? Uh, in book one, you will, you will visit them as seven Ps. There are seven Ps when we talk about the service sector. There are four Ps when, when we talk about the manufacturing sector, or uh, we, uh, in some books, there are five Ps. So we'll go through each, and you will know the difference between them. When we use the four, when we use the five, when we use the seven, and so on. The, what are they? Price, product, price, promotion, and the place. These are the four. Okay? Session five covers responses of businesses to social and environmental concerns. Here we will discuss Green marketing. What we mean by green marketing? Okay, how uh, how some how most of businesses now try to be to follow the green investments. Okay, and try not to hurt the environment, not to hurt uh, people, and so on. Okay, and you will know why they do that and how they do that in session five. Book five. The first two sessions of book five are optional readings. Okay, optional readings uh, about uh, uh, thinking of businesses critically, and the other one is about history of business. So you can read them. Uh, but we will start actually by session three, which is about globalization. What we mean by globalization? Uh, uh, what are the drivers for globalization? Session four um, talks about the different types of power. Okay, different types and levels of power, uh, starting from the personal level to the organizational level. Okay, and then session five, session five examines what happens when corporations go f to go uh, uh, too far. With they mean by this, when they start to practice negative business power on the whole society, how to control this and what should we do? This is about. Uh, uh, or what you will study in U120 in details. Do you have any questions or comments? Sure? Hmm. Which topics you feel that you'll be interested in? Accounting. Accounting? Accounting? Huh? Accounting. Accounting. Huh? Marketing. Marketing and uh, Accounting. different ways of working in business. Marketing and different ways of working in business. Very good. Huh? Marketing No HR. <laughs> <laughs> no HR employees. <laughs> No? Okay, when you study it, you will like it, I'm sure. Inshallah. Okay. How to pass the course? Study. Study. <laughs> <laughs> A very good answer. <laughs> yeah, sure, of course, by studying. <laughs> okay. Passing the course is a very important issue, right? Of course, we look for gaining knowledge and skills and we look for passing the course as well, right? So, uh, what are the assessment criteria? The assessment criteria. When we talk about assessment criteria, you need to know that we have two different uh, channels in assessment criteria. The first one is the continuous assessment, which includes T1, 
CMA, tutor market assignment, and LTA, the midterm exam. So the first channel is the continuous assessment channel. The second channel is the final exam channel. So we have two main channels to pass the course, continuous assessment and final exam. The continuous assessment includes two different components, the tutor market assignment, TMA, and the midterm exam, MTA. All right? All right. The tutor market assignment carries 20% of the whole mark, 20%. And the midterm exam carries 30%, a total of how much? 50%. This means that the continuous assessment is, is graded yeah. of 50%, right? Carries 50% of the total mark, continuous assessment. And then the final exam carries another 50%. A total of how much? 100%. Okay. All right. How to pass the course? In order to pass the course, we have a rule, which is 2020 with a total of 50. 2020 with a total of 50. What do we mean by this? 2020 with a total of 50. Yes. <laughs> it is like that. Okay. At least, this means that at least you need to get 20% in the continuous assessment. All right? And at least 20% in the final exam. If you got here 20 and here 20, a total of how much? 20%. But the rule is what? 20, 20 with a total of? 50. So in order to pass the course, you need to get here at least 20, at least 20 in the continuous assessment, at least 20 in the final exam, but the total should be 50, at least. So if you got here 20, you need to get uh, uh, 30 in the final exam and vice versa, right? 25, 25, okay. Assume that you got 10 in the continuous assessment and 40 in the final exam. Are you passing? No. Although the total is, is 50, right? Why? Because you need to get at least 20% in the continuous assessment, at least 20% in the final exam and total of 50. You know what we mean by a total of 50? Said D. Hmm. <laughs> which is not which is not good at all. It's a D. Okay? Do you like that? Oh, all right. D means what? D means 50% means passing, getting D. A D, a D reduces your GPA. Keeps this keep this in your mind. Never target a D. A D is very harmful, by the way, okay? So when you, I'm telling you about the passing criteria or the assessment criteria, but you should look for getting C plus B, B plus A, and so on. Don't think of the D, okay? So now we understand how to pass the course? Yes. All right. All right. All right. How to match the course through our, through the whole semester? We have tutorials. Tutorials, these classes that we have here. Tutorials means what? What do we mean by tutorials? It's a face to face meeting, right? But in tutorials, it's better that, and I expect you to prepare for your class. Prepare. You need to read before coming. Come with questions, come active. Okay, do not come be active. I expect you to come active, you know what I mean? So while I'm talking, you have some knowledge that you can, you can say, you can participate well, some questions, right? This will help you to get a better understanding of the topic. Rather than just staying and listening to me, this is not the, the, uh, like the outstanding way. To get a better knowledge and background, a deep, deep understanding of the, of the, of the topic, you should come prepared to your class. Prepare well and come with questions. Come and discuss me, okay? <laughs> discuss your colleagues, okay? Tell me I like that. I'm convinced, I'm not convinced with this. Tell me about what you think. Tell me about the difficulties you encountered uh, in reading the course, or in reading the topic, all right? 
All right. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, and then we have the office hours. And office hours, office hours, uh, it's not tutoring, it's something different. Uh, I will announce the office hour for you. Usually, usually, our office hour will be directly after the, the, the teaching uh, uh, time. Uh, however, of course, we will try. If you don't like it like that, we can change. Um, in office hour, you come with questions. If you have any question, you come with uh, some topics that you would like me to uh, rediscuss with you. Okay? You come with ideas. You come with uh, um, with the uh, recommendations and so on. So it's a face like it's something give you to some extent privacy with your tutor. Okay? All right, so if you have any topic related to the course that you do not understand, if you have some difficulties personally you encounter in the course personally, okay, you need some uh, recommendations from me, guidance, extra guidance that I am not able to provide you during classes, you can, we can use the office hour and try usually to use the office hour. I will be waiting for you, okay? All right, so this is, and then we have the LMS. The LMS is a very important thing in our lives as uh, uh, people working and students studying in, o in AOU, okay? The LMS is the, is the learning management system, the learning management system. On this LMS, LMS I will upload this, uh, the slides for you. You will find your team A, the tutor market assignment. You will find the submission link to meet the deadline and submit your team A. <laughs> and you can send me messages through the LMS, okay? And they will answer you. This is something, uh, this is one thing. Another thing, we use the forums and the course chatting rooms. So we can chat on some topics. I sometimes, I post some topics related to the course. I post uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, sources and they ask you some questions and then you start to give me comments on the forum, okay? This is one thing. Another thing, sometimes we have, we set time for chatting. So we have a specific time weekly to chat on, on different courses, or sorry, on, the, on different topics in the course, okay? So this LMS is something like that I, I like very much because even if you are not able to come and see me, we can, still we can be in communication, in contact, right? So, uh, and to get better understanding of, uh, of the LMS, we have here uh, our IT uh, team provides um, uh, uh, workshops to familiarize you with the LMS features, the facilities, and all these things, okay? This way, I'm almost done. Do you have any questions concerning our introduction class? Questions? Um, huh? Yes. Uh, may I have a main term <coughs> presentation mm -hmm. as I'm preparing for the beginning of the Yes. And the presenting here? Yes, sure. And this is one of the activities that we are used to do. Usually, usually in B120, especially in B120, we divide the, the class into groups, a group of four or five members, it depends. And I let you select each other. It's your, you are free to, to select whoever in the, in the group, okay? And then, uh, every class, inshallah, you will, we, one, of the group, one of the groups will present for five to seven minutes, five to seven minutes, the topic that I'm supposed to explain. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yes, we do that. <laughs> uh, I do. It, we. I prefer to be uh, um, in groups. Why? Because when you have a group, when you have a group and you are a team, you will. Be, you have. You are good in English. He is good uh, uh, in summarization. Uh, uh, another person is good uh, in analysis and so on. So you can build the skills of each other through discussions. Okay. So, and usually I join you for 30, like, uh, you give me the schedule of meeting during the week that you prepare for your presentation, the schedule of meeting, and I join you the, during the first meeting you have as a group for 30 minutes to make sure that you are on the right track, you, you, you know what you're doing, and you started to, to, uh, to, uh, to get some output of what you're doing and so on, okay? And then uh, you are, you are, when you are prepared for the presentation, you come next class and prepare uh, and present your, your slides. 
okay, or for seven minutes, and then I start teaching, I start tutoring the, the topic in detail for everybody. Uh, you get feedback from me, you get your feedback from your colleagues and so on. And actually, it is a very interesting experience because uh, ask your previous colleagues, they, they enjoyed this very much. At the beginning, they felt, oh, it's difficult, uh, we don't want to meet, we don't want to do that. But actually, when they did it, some of them continued studying together this way. Another thing that we would like to, to do in class and in, in, uh, as part of our course, not, not necessarily in class, I'd like you to start working on vocab. I know, I know, I know that some of you might have some problems in language. Okay? Now, not all, but some of you. Okay? And the first business, uh, business course, of course, includes some uh, new terminology, business terminology, that you are not familiar with. If you do, do not develop your vocab in B120, you will encounter problems in B120 and the more advanced courses. Because you will not be able to study. How to study without understanding? But, but okay, just, me, uh, just one word. And when you develop your vocab, you need to develop it in English. Do not develop it in Arabic. So it's English to English, not English to Arabic, into Arabic, okay? So uh, this is a very important aspect. Uh, your colleagues, in previous semesters, prepared like each one started to, to develop the, and, uh, the vocab of, of one of the sessions. Uh, okay, they come with 30 to 50 words every time. Okay, English to English, and there and they share with their colleagues. So this way, they, they were able to develop their, their English language and the business terminology uh, 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 as I, I wanted them to, to do, and this helped them a lot, especially if you started them this from now, you will be able to prepare yourself well for the team A afterwards because team A needs a lot of elaboration, work, writing and so on. Okay? So this is another thing. So all what I'd like you to do this after class is just to divide you, yourself, into groups of three, four, five persons. It depends on you. And I, 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 I expect to receive the papers, the papers, the, this classification. Uh, by email, by email during this week, so that we can start working next time, inshallah, on that. Okay? All right, very good. Questions? If I cannot remember the terminology by heart, exactly by heart, can I just call them, understand them, and explain them by my own words? Sure, if you, but, but make sure that you explain them properly. This is the, the critical issue, because sometimes, sometimes you, you at this stage, at, at B120 stage, sometimes you feel that. Okay, I, 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 I'm not able to, to, to study this part and I will express it on my, my own way, which is a very go, a good thing, okay? To use your own words. I don't mind at all. As but as make sure are as uh, they are correct. Okay. Make sure that the, you do that, you express the concept properly, except also, again, except for definitions. That you, definitions are definitions, you know? Mm -hmm. Definitions, you, you transfer the ideas and the, the scientific, uh, uh, expressions and scientific explanation of somebody else. So definitions are definitions, but in, in anything else, yes, you have to be very accurate in definitions. But in, um, for anything else, you can use your own words, but in sh make sure that uh, you, you, you use the prop, yeah, you, you do that properly, correctly, without any mistakes, and, and so on. Okay, and that's it. Uh, do you have any comments, any questions? Mm -hmm. Do you like the, the class today? Uh, do, do you have uh, any, any suggestions to improve the class next time? Uh, I do have one concern huh? which I need to share. Huh? If it's possible to make field trips with an organization to understand... You are right. We'll do that inshallah. We'll try. We'll try. We'll try inshallah. Do you have any other comments? Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah, Peter. Uh, huh? I can just say thank you for being on time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Thank you so much. And if you continue to be on time, I love that. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, do you think that our first step on the bridge to success is, is a successful step? Okay. So, uh, see you next time on our second step on the bridge.